Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. Before we dive into today's video, I want to share with you a new guide that I've created. This one is specifically for folks just starting out on their recording journey. If you're in the process of thinking through how to set up your studio, I've created something called the Five Home Studio Necessities, which is a guide that will walk you through the five components that you absolutely need to get started recording today. And I also share with you the things you don't need. There's a lot of stuff that you can have in your home studio, as you probably already know, but there are really only five things that are essential. The rest you can get later as you learn more about this seemingly overwhelming but also really fun hobby of making music in a home studio. You can get that guide for free. Just go to homestudiocorner.com slash gear. Enter your email address. That gets you on the newsletter, which is a whole lot of fun. And you'll get an email with a download link for the guide as well. Okay, the big question everybody wants to know when they start thinking about recording at home, and that question is, can you even get good recordings at home? Can I make something here in my home studio in this room above my garage that sounds as good Good as a record being made at a professional studio 10 miles away in downtown Nashville? The answer is absolutely yes, you can. And the answer is also no, you can't. Here's what I mean. When I say yes, you can, it is absolutely possible. I know because I've done it and I've known hundreds of people who have done it as well. If you go listen to my music on Spotify or Apple Music, look up my name, Joe Gilder, you'll hear songs that were recorded in professional studios and songs, most of them, that were recorded in my home studio in several different homes, just so you know, like lots of different spaces. And I've managed to make stuff that I would say sounds great and I would hold up next to stuff done in professional studios. Flip that around and we've all heard crappy music, both recorded in home studios, but also recorded in nice studios. Just because it's a nice studio doesn't mean that you're going to throw some garbage in there and it's going to come out smelling wonderful. There's so much more that goes into it than just what room you're in and what equipment you have. You instinctively know this, but it's easy to kind of fall into the marketing hype of, oh, if I just had this, this, that, 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 those, and three of those, I'm going to make Grammy award-winning music. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Okay, so follow-up question. Do I need at least some of the equipment that they have in pro studios in order to get pro-sounding music at home? And the answer to that is no, but also yes. <laughs> I'm speaking out of both sides of my mouth today because it's a nuanced thing. If you sat me down in front of a, the identical rig to something that Joe Bonamassa uses or Tom Morello, and I picked up the guitar and started playing, I'm not going to sound like those guys. I might sound similar because I'm using similar equipment, but there's so much more that goes into their tone and what makes them who they are than the guitar and pedals and amps that they're using. We know this instinctively when it comes to playing music. We don't assume just because I sit down at the same piano that Elton John sat down that I'm going to crank out the next tiny dancer. We, that's just common sense. But for some reason, we tend to fall for that lie, that really attractive lie, that if I just have the exact same equipment that that studio has, I'm going to make the same quality music that they have. And maybe we don't verbalize that. Maybe it's just kind of in the back of our mind. But if you're holding on to that and believing in that, I got to let you know that's it's a lie. It's not true. It's not the gear that's going to make it great. On the flip side, once you get good at this, when you learn how to record, how to mix, how to do all these different steps of the process, and you get good at it, where you're getting great results using the kind of equipment I talk about in my five home studio necessities, then it makes sense to upgrade to some of the nicer gear that the professionals use in the big studios. Why? The difference between the amateur or the beginner and the professional isn't so much the equipment that they use. It's not even, people say tone is in the fingers. I don't think that's it either. I think it's all up here. It's all in knowing what a good sound is and then also knowing how to achieve that sound. The problem when you're starting out is you don't know either. You may think you know a good tone, but when it comes to recording, what sounds good to you may not be what actually sounds good in the context of the whole recording process. And this is a process that you have to learn sometimes slowly over time. So what makes a pro a pro isn't the equipment, it's that they know when they hear something, they can register what it sounds like, what it needs to sound like, and they know what to do to get 
from here to there. Finally, you need to embrace the fact that this is a lifelong pursuit. Some people get into woodworking, people like you and me get into making music at home. And it's not something that you're gonna master in a weekend. You're gonna make music today and you're gonna make music 10 years from now. And ideally, the music 10 years from now will be better than what you make today. And if not better, then at least different. That's what I love about creating and releasing music. I can go listen to that song I recorded when I was in 11th grade. And while just about everything about it is terrible, I still love it because it's a snapshot of 17-year-old Joe and the things he was thinking about and the equipment that he had and sitting down at my mom's piano while I recorded it, like all of those things just kind of flood back. It's a little time capsule of this is what I could make at that moment in time. And the music I make today, I hope I look back on it 10 years from now and say, I love that. I love the things that I did because I know where I was. I used the skills and the equipment that I had available to me to make that. And then hopefully 10 years from now, I'm making something that's even better and goes deeper and, and is even more excellent, if that makes sense. But it's a lifelong pursuit. We don't expect to buy a lathe, start turning some wood, and crank out something amazing the first try. We may, but more than likely, it's going to take lots of time, lots of effort, lots of years, lots of training, and lots of skill to get from here to there. If you don't enjoy that, if that doesn't sound exciting and fun to you, then this might not be for you. However, if you get excited about getting lost in something and making great art and creating a body of work over the next couple of decades, then welcome. It's really fun. It's really worthwhile. And I'm excited that you're here and I'll be with you every step of the way. All right, that's it for me for today. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.